Look at this. He made the air defense over the right side invisible, so the Hound moved off to the left side after he used Rock Opposed to clear out the air defense right of the entry so he could get all the way in there with his ward ability intact. So that was really cool. And out of that blimp came... Looks like goblins, 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 and super wizards, and super archers. The grand finals of the Town Hall 14 Cup is underway. A $25,000 prize pool over this 10-week tournament. This is week nine, and of course, like every other week in this tournament, we're giving away $2,500 every single time. And now we'll see who's able to claim it here as Powerhouse, who just came off of a perfect war. And a dominant performance on defense. There was an absolute slaughter in their semifinals. And Hexa, they slid by with a very, very close match. There were some clutch attacks to lock in the win. And a lot of time fails. And we'll see if they can convert some of those into some triples here. Into this war against Powerhouse today. But the winner of this claims the title as the Town Hall 14 Cup Champion. We have a sneaky goblin set going after the Town Hall. Able to get in there and take the Town Hall down. It was exposed a little bit there. And he'll be diving in with a sneaky bat rider. One of my favorite Town Hall 14 attacks. A very, very powerful attack here. But you need to get all the splash damage dealt with on the base. We've got wizard towers all across this bottom area around the Eagle Artillery. Two multi infernos in the area. The log launcher will pair with the king. With the Warden and with the Queen to dive in there. And he still has Dragon Riders and Aurora Champion to come in on the right or left. Or maybe both flanks to try to support the heroes. And try to get as much of the splash damage dealt with as possible. But look at the base here and try to figure out where the bats would start on this base here. If you were attacking right now, where would you think about putting the bats here? Ideally, you put them on the minimum range of a scatter shot. So I'd like to see probably the bats start on the right side and the dragon is starting on the left but no he's going to go opposite of that the queen is still moving hard off to the left side so she's doing some good work so maybe the bats are going to start onto the left side scatter shot honestly if the queen takes out the wizard tower which she's handling right now he's in a pretty good spot here but uh needs to freeze up the defensive scatter shot didn't start directly on the scatter shot right above it like we see a lot of times there but builds up a nice bat wave there gets out in front of the queen there will potentially save her and he gets that in that scatter shot down, freeze up as he goes into the wizard tower. That's his last freeze. Has to get the pass to one shot right here. This is important. This is important. Hits it, hits it, hits it. Gets it, and the bat wave survives. Lost a chunk of it, but the bulk of it will keep on moving. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how we start off this grand finals match. A sneaky bat rider gets it done in overwhelming fashion. He's got the king still alive. He's got the queen still alive. Dragon Runner still moving. A big bat wave sweeps across the base there. 30 seconds to spare. And Powerhouse, after their perfect war, opens up strong in this grand finals. Joppa will start us off here for Hexa. Salim Sky on defense. Got a queen charge into Lalo for their opening attack. Queen charge is going to be able to reach over the wall here and pick up this air defense. And then looks like he's getting a funnel to drive the queen off to the left to go to the artillery. And which is with the funnel here. Very clean. Wall breaks into the storage. Now, you can only wall break at these open quarters if you try to wall break a building that is behind a wall that on a wall segment that is at least seven tiles from the opening. So that's why he had to send the wall breaker at that angle. But he wouldn't be able to get the wall breaker to target that until he cleared the buildings to her right. So very uh very thought out wall breaks right there. Able to get the queen into the base there initially. And over another side here, the Warden will deploy with a Lalo. He's getting... Okay, this is what they've been doing the last war. They had a couple time fells with this attack here, or near misses. And he'll try it again here. Guys, this is a very interesting attack here where he dives the blimp in, protected by the Ward ability, sends in Headhunters with that Ward ability to get the defensive Queen down, and then the Bloons... Like the like to hit that rage there and get in that multi inferno. But look at the lane is created through the middle base there. The queen is going to keep on moving out the left side of the base there. She did take some damage to her healers, but she's still holding in strong. The world champion will get that multi inferno down and join in with the warden. Now he starts in more Lalo in from the right side of the base and will start to collapse in that entire area. The warden ends up surviving skeleton spell down onto the single inferno, but the world champion is locked onto. She needs to pop her ability. Oh, she barely gets her ability off. Grabs out the sweeper as that. Inferno goes full beam on her. Warden needs to get back in action here. He doesn't have enough balloons to pull his targeting right now. And the balloons that are in his area are dying out there. So the Warden will left, be left stranded behind into cleanup there, unfortunately. 
Things are going to struggle as they try to get past him, and the Queen will also struggle, but she is going to handle that scatter shot. King's providing taking on the outside of the base. If the Queen handles that defensive Grand Warden, then he's in a good spot, but the Warden finally steps through and takes it, but at the loss of his Queen right there, uh, that's a little archer walk right here, <laughs> but he's got to get back over these tassels. Looks like he's got it under control. A little bit shaky on that one. A little bit, little bit close. But it looks like the Warden will be able to finish off the base here. The Warden can outrange the remainder of the defense. He's got plenty of HP if he does end up wandering into range a little bit too close there. But unless he hits a Black Air Bomb right about now, he's good. Okay. <laughs> I was trying to jinx it. I, I, I probably shouldn't do that. Oh, I'm playing with fire right there. But Joppa gets it done, and we start off with a triple on both sides. If you look at the path that Hexa had to go through, they had to beat Tribe Gaming, who got second place in the World Championship. Then they had to beat Ninjas in Pajamas, who was on the same path as MS Esports, who went out in the round of 16. So that is your number two and your number three in the world right there from our most recent World Championship. So... Big name pro teams have already been knocked out of the competition. Even some other teams like Time to Throw went out in the first round. So, Badzinger, after put up a perfect war, they went out as well. Oh, we're live. <laughs> Hold on. I'm over here blabbering away about the prior performance in this. And we are into the next attack. Your leader snuck this one in. Looks like he used a clone super minion bomb. We'll have to rewatch that opener. I apologize for that. But he is able to clear out the town hall. And he got out both scatter shots. Oh my gosh. Wow, we got a lot. Did he invest his war? He didn't. Wow. All right, leader taking out a big chunk of this base. He'll follow it up with a Hydra. It must have been a blizzard or was it a super archer bomb? It had to have been a super archer bomb, right? Is there anything that could take out that much of the base there other than a super archer bomb? I don't think that there is. I really don't think there is. But yeah, that's some insane, insane value to get two scatter shots, get the town hall, yeah, expos. He got a sweeper out of the way there, and he saw the warden that he pops in the dragons. Oh no, oh oh, leader, are you? Oh, where are these dragons going? Well, that's the problem. Um, dragons kind of missed the funnel there, didn't they? Maybe should have spent a little more time. Uh, Re-establishing that funnel 100% because these dragons are getting shredded. He still has two defensive heroes on the back end of the base. His Roar Champion deploys up top. If he can get through the defensive Roar Champion and keep his Roar Champion safe, then he has a chance here. King and Queen still have their ability. He decides to freeze at the defensive Queen instead of freezing up the defensive Roar Champion or defensive, whatever. He got the King frozen up in the Tesla Farm event. But he does have the Roar Champion gate there by the Dragon. He's trying to chase him down right now. Terminal Popper ability. Chris with the back end defense. Okay. Okay. I guess. I guess he pulls through anyways. It was looking a bit shaky there. But he just needs to get it cleaned up here in the next 30 seconds. So he will get it done. I guess after you get that much value out of the initial setup, you're bound to triple. So let's quickly rewatch that opener. Because I kind of want to see exactly what that was. I, I have a feeling it was a Super Archer Bomb because I don't think a blizzard could have got as much value as he did there. Like Super wizards can only reach so far where super archers can go. Oh my gosh, he's kind of close here. Don't time fail, please don't time fail, please don't time fail. Oh, okay, 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 leader. Got it close, got it close. <laughs> wow, all right. Another trip on the board here. Let's see that opener. It was a blimp sailing in across with a couple of rocket blues to clear out the air defense. A hound, look at this. He made the air defense over the right side invisible. So the hound moved off to the left side after he used rocket blues to clear out the air defense right in the entry. So he could get all the way in there with his ward ability intact. So that was really cool. And out of that blimp came, looks like goblins, 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 and super wizards and super archers. So it was... A mix of both of them in there to get the chains through the town hall. Lots of oh, those are bomb towers. Those aren't scatter shots. <laughs> I thought he I thought he took out scatter shots on the right and left of the town hall there, but he got one scatter shot. So still a lot of value out of that. Able luck of the triple. And now we'll head over to Hexa and we'll see if they can match it. Vitor will come in with a queen charge into Lalo. Is this gonna be another one like we just saw? No, he's got a flame flinger select on this one here. I thought maybe it'd be the weird one with the warden and the blimp right out of the gate there. But he's just going to go ahead and throw in a flame flinger next to the queen. 
The Flame Flinger is looking like it's going to get pushed to the north there by the Queen. And the Queen will hold the tension of the Mortar, which is always good. I always like to see a Flame Flinger working next to a Hero Charge, whether it be a Warden Walk or a Queen Charge. Both of them work out great. But if the Queen's pathing is secured, then definitely the Queen Charge can be very, very powerful in this scenario. But the Flame Flinger will continue across with no threats all the way to the Multi-Inferno at a minimum. Unless it runs into ground skellies, but I think he already tested that top area for traps. You can see the test has already been pulled out of the ground up there. So thinking ahead there, playing it conservative, making sure that the traps are cleared and he can continue to get that flame flinger value. But this queen will get over there and get that expo down. Wall breaks into the core of the base. Wall breaker will travel all the way through, hits a spring trap and dodges it, does get the access. And holy value, this queen has access to everything that she needs to in the middle of base. They're getting the Ego Artillery, the multi inferno and the Defensive World Champion and pick up an Expo as well. And he'll get some protection on the flank there as the Lala will charge the Town Hall. Only a 31% right now, so he needs to quickly gather some percentage. But look at this. He does have an Earthquake. The Town Hall activates off of a Lava Hound popping. Pretty used to Earthquake now. That's the word ability. Get him through the Town Hall. The Rage will carry him out of the Town Hall poison and... Get him quickly into some other defenses there. Scattershot way up ahead. Flame Flinger is going to now take a double damage for her. Well, the Queen is going to... Oh, where's she going? Queen circles south. He had another wall break that is going to give the Queen a transition across the base there. But whoa! Where the heck did all the blues go? It is evaporated. Here comes the uh, King in from the left side of the base. World Champion will join over there. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. You can still get this done. The King of the World Champion, all of his heroes really standing other than the... No, the ward is still south as well. Okay, everybody's still moving. He has the... What, does he have headhunters with those? Did he have yetis and headhunters inside of his flame flinger? Or did he just have headhunters on standby? One way or another, this base is crushed. He'll swag a handful of spells there. He didn't need the Lalo to get anything other than the town hall area. And it's a triple for Hexa and six on the board on both sides. We're all tied up. Bang Jamil will strike with a Queen Charge Hogminer Hybrid for Powerhouse's third attack here. Starting with a wall break up at the top of the base. Wall breaker didn't get that multi open. The way that he deployed that, I don't think he intended to get that multi. He does get some tanking for the defense in the area now. And the next wall breaker does go a bit deeper. So yeah, get the outside walls open by deploying the wall breaker without any tanking. Get a deeper push with the next wall breaker by deploying it with tanking. And now the queen has enough of the wall opened that he's able to walk his queen in there without any difficulty and doesn't need to set a crazy funnel there. I like that. That was, that was clever. Go ahead and get the ground skills out of the way and get all the way to the multi inferno here. I don't know which side you put the, the hybrid through here. I assume through the left so you can get the eagle artillery down earlier, but the base over there is looking. Kind of thick. I feel like the pathing is better on the right side. And that's what he sees too. So he will go in with the right side. And make sure that he can keep a narrow lane towards the town hall for the hybrid to push his way through. The wall breaker will come in at the wizard tower to let the queen into a void space to get into the scatter shot. Another wall breaker that the queen can get over there. And oh, queen, where are you going? Queen is not cooperating here. The wall breakers are going to waste on the right side. The queen will get pinned behind a couple defenses. At least she can... Maybe tank the scatter shot there. Look at that. The queen is tanking the scatter shot on the left side there. So able to get this miners and everybody protected as they move through the core of the base. Get the poison down while he fights off the defensive CC. But there's a lot of hounds. The queen's going to get distracted on that. But luckily she's distracted while she's standing in a spot that she continues to take the scatter shot. So continue to get some good value. But the warden has gone way south there. The hogs released from the siege bricks. It ended up taking the town hall blast. The warden was following the king all the way at the bottom of the base there and kind of did him dirty on this one. But the queen is now finally looping back around there. But her healer's getting targeted by the scatter shot. They all get taken down. This might be the first defense of powerhouse over the course of two wars, but not quite yet. He's still got some punch here. Finally gets that artillery down. King's still moving on the outside. Queen has her ability. She can pop it to get the defensive world champion down. And she can clear out some of those back end defenses. He's still got some force moving here. He loses Warden. Grand Expo is chipping away, but the Queen has uh, a little bit of safety from the tanking being provided by the King for a bit. And all of these 
wizards and her archers as well so she gets all the way to the expo and still has some troops just shielding her while she dishes out some damage she can still potentially triple this it is extremely close here that expo is doing work mowing these troops down it's about to turn on the queen the queen tries to take it but can't quite get it it's a defense 97 percent here for powerhouse that is the first miss they've had since the quarterfinals of this tournament and it was very, very close. Unfortunately, the queen did not want to cooperate. She definitely threw that attack there, going all over the place there, getting her healers killed. It was a disaster. And then the warden also tried to throw. But imagine your queen throws and your warden throws, and you still end up with a 97%. Hozard live for Hexa. Now with an opportunity to get in the lead, but they're gonna need a high percentage or a triple one way or another. Breaking out Electro Titans here at Town Hall 14. Now this base held very, very well against Powerhouse's last opponent. I think they actually held him to a one star on this. So we'll see if it can do the same against Hexa or something even remotely similar. But this one is gonna be an attack that is very powerful against anti two-star bases. We do like to see the super bowlers wrecking through like a like a wrecking ball through these anti two-star bases when they pack so much in the core where you can reach it all right there. If he sets the funnel strong, which he has, get that mortar down over there though. We'd like to see some distraction on that before the flame thing gets targeted. I don't know if that's gonna happen though. Like he's more focusing on to the super bowlers entering into the base. So that flame figure will just take some more to fire there, which is unfortunate. We'll lose out on some HP and maybe misses an inferno long run as a result. But the main push here starting to core of the base here. The king work with the which is on the outside right and everybody else trying to get funneled right into the core of the base there. The king did not use his ability yet, but he does have his ability still intact there while he engages the defensive queen. He'll loop back out there. Now pop his ability, engage the queen, clear the way there for the world champion to sweep across the right side of the base. Roll is in the middle there, getting targeted by the single Inferno. We're going to lose one as it breaks off to the left. Flameflinger is about to open up, but the Queen is not going to the Town Hall. This is a problem. Your Titan is the only thing on the Town Hall right now. It is able to secure it. Queen loops around. We'll walk onto the single Inferno. Yeti's coming out to potentially pass her up and giving her a little bit of protection, but that Electro Titan in the middle of the base there has sweeped out the core and will now lock on the scatter shot. It is inside the middle ranger, so it's not protected the world champion, but the world champion sweeps through, gets the scatter shot down. Queen handles the multi. Yeti's on the outside, giving the backside tanking this to ability. All defenses are gone, and Hexa with one that looked like it might have potentially gone to a one star but that electric titan clutching that town hall and then continuing strong past that he had the rage on it he had the healers on the electric titan that could have gone really really poorly very quickly but that is not what happened and now hexa has the lead by a star and three buildings sonu is live for powerhouse with a queen charge into dragon riders where do we deploy using regular wall breakers here. Six regular wall breakers, opting for them instead of super wall breakers because he wants sneaky goblins and rock balloons apparently. Uses some rock balloons to snipe off a defense over to the left side of the queen. Queen will get another rock balloon to go after the air defense right there and clear the way for a blimp to go in and secure the town takedown. Able to pass over the top of those storages and lock onto the town hall. The goblins I assume are coming out. We'll secure the tunnel takedown, and it's kind of scary to throw Sneak Goblins with all the storages right there, but... Sneak Goblins come off of the Town Hall, turn back ar around to take out that uh, Dark Elixir storage, which definitely sets up the funnel very nicely for the Queen, but that Ground Expo will continue to chip away at this Queen for quite a while here. we while to get uh, outranged. We move off to the right side and go into the defensive Queen and the Multi-Inferno. Looking clean. I like this setup here. I'm a little bit worried about that ground expo continuing to chip away there, especially with the Grand Warden and the Defensive Queen up ahead here. So he's going to need more than just a... Okay, she goes in. I didn't expect her to go in as well. All right, well, he can now rage up, and he's going to need a freeze here. Need a freeze or invisibility. Okay, the defense... Oh, he went to ability. That's not good. It's rough. Not going exactly his way here. Tessa's popping on the right side. The King will deploy over there, but the King... And run to the Tessa farm, which is going to mess up his funnel over there. Where Champion deploys, and we'll try to help him power through that. Lastly, help him clean up some ground skellies right there. But the Queen goes down. This is not going his way. This 
Town Hall area was looking like he had it mostly under control there, but that expo proves to be difficult to get through. I knew it was going to cause some problems, and I knew he had to have the spells ready as he engaged the Grand Warden and the Defensive Queen because a rage is not enough to carry the Queen through that. And a little bit late on the spells there, it cost him big, loses the World Champion as well. Oh no, this is going really poorly. So new, come on, get it under control here. Gotta get the percentage up. The chances in a triple are pretty much out the door, but he gets it up blue to go finish off the last strike on that multi inferno. The king. Go work in. He's inside the middle range of the scatter shot there. He's gonna try to get that scatter shot down. He doesn't quite get it. He goes down as well. The healers go down, and the drag riders will get whatever they can here and try to salvage as much percentage as they can get. He does have a single inferno in the middle base there. I wanna pop the word ability into that. Let him build up his beam for just a second. Pop it now. Up it now. Okay, he's okay. You can hold it for a little bit longer. Do you have any headhunters? Or champions in a hurt? I mean, <laughs> not, not much you can do at this point, anyways. Not much you can do. He'll throw down wall breakers on the left side there. Maybe you can get them to die and help take out a building or something like that. Just get a little damage on it. I don't even know what you can do here. There's not a lot that you can do. He's just kind of throwing anything he has to try to give any kind of distraction for these wizards and get as much percentage as he can, but it will climb up to an 85%. So all things considered, after how bad everything went on that attack there, 85% is not a bad recovery. Stratocaster. Strike for Hexa's fourth attack. Sending in a whole bunch of rocket blues to clear the way here to get any black mines out of the way as a blimp sails in. Now, this is interesting. In the last war, in the semifinals for Powerhouse, they did an attack almost identical to this one. And with the exact same approach, but from the opposite side. And it ended up as a one star. So I'm not saying. But you know what I'm saying. He does get the CC pull. The last time they tried to go out to the town hall with the blizzard instead of dropping out and get the scatter shot. So this does feel a little bit safer. It was a, a lower approach there, a smaller investment than the attack that went to a one star. The last one used the warden to try to go deeper and take the town hall and then ended up missing the town hall. So it is a it is quite the different scenario because he still has the warden that can support the town hall takedown. However, Look at the percentage that he's going to have to be at because the Town Hall will be the first in the path once he starts his way in if he decides to go in at the Town Hall. So that means we have one of two options. Either we go over the Town Hall and risk not having the percentage to have it activated or we go in at the bottom and end onto the Town Hall and try to go over the head of the heroes and support them and risk the one star in that direction. So one way or another, this is an insanely risky attack here for Stratocaster. And it's going to be a difficult push across the base here. But the Queen can reach that air defense. She can reach over the wall, get the Eagle Artillery down. Big value right there. World Champion crosses through, goes invisible. She already used her ability, but she hits a giant bomb. She does get that multi inferno down. The Queen circles around to the air defense. And, you know, he doesn't need to really do much to support the heroes now. He can go right to the Town Hall, and he can use his remaining freezes. He can use his haste to get past the poison. Town Hall's activated on percentage now because the heroes cleared so much at the bottom there, and he will secure the Town Hall takedown. Also parrying the Town Hall takedown, Warden ability to get some headhunters in to go take out the defensive queen. They're inside of the poison right there, so they're not doing a lot of damage. They are working her down. A couple of bombs right there. The haste will carry him into the scatter shot. Looking good. A couple of red air bombs are going off. Lots of red or black air bombs as well. But the headers did not get the defensive queen down. The warden ended up getting sniped off at some point there. And the queen survived. You'll have to go back for her. She has a chance to take some balloons down. But you go ahead and haste up. And they don't go for her initially. Red air bombs are going off. They have to go over the other side of the base there. They're going to go to this, the building there before they go to the queen. This queen is doing some work. Can she stop this? She has a, She can stop this. This queen holds the line. And she'll pick up these minions as well. They're all arriving to her one at a time there. And it is a triple. He doesn't need to take her down. He gets the rest of the buildings. The queen stays standing. And Hexa will move up by two stars. They all but have it locked in. And now we'll have to see if Powerhouse can get a triple and a one star on defense. Because Hexa has uh, they got him on the ropes. Next exchange is a difference of $800 here in prize pool. 
So don't give up. I mean, no matter what, Powerhouse is not going to be walking away empty-handed here. But if they can get a triple and get a defense at a one star, they could still potentially pull this war back. It's not unheard of, and after their last war being so defensive, they held their last opponent down to seven stars total. They had a zero star and two one stars, which is insane because that team cleared out a ton of big name teams on their way through. So to hold a team like, uh, what was it, so a Stower to seven stars was absolutely insane. So if there's any team that can get the defenses, it is Powerhouse. So trust the defenses and let's see if they can get this triple to set themselves up. But Edrax charged right at the Town Hall here. Double side-by-side -side rages. Edrax do end up with a little bit of a split there as the Sweepers knock him back, but he completely avoids the Town Hall blast because the Sweeper knocks him away from it. Gets the Defensive Queen down. Gets the World Champion frozen up on the right side. Gets her down as well. He's got chain opportunities to get through to this uh, sweeper here, and he won't get it. Okay, <laughs> I didn't get the chain off of the Builder Hut. But that's fine, he's behind the sweepers now. Lots of E-Drags are still alive. He charged directly into the sweepers there at the town hall, and he's able to get these E-Drags out healthy out the other side. Honestly, that's a clever way that we see people try to do every once in a while. It, it It's surprisingly effective. I don't know how, but when the sweepers knock you away from the town hall blast, as long as you get like one E-Drag, that you invest the spells into protecting on their approach to the town hall. This attack can be quite good. So there we go. A compact phase. Rip to shreds here. The Electro Dragons get it done here. Our champion ability still intact. Queen ability still intact. He could probably swag both of those. These drags absolutely rip this base up. And that gives them their chance. Now they have to get the defense. So it all comes down once again to the player who's clutched the last two wars, once against Tribe Gaming, and once against Ninjas in Pajamas, the war, once again, falls onto Gabriella's shoulders. Good luck, we go to the final attack. All right, here we go. Gabriella is live. She clutched the triple against Tribe Gaming. She clutched the triple that won their war against Ninjas in Pajamas. And now, she's in charge of the final takedown, of the final base, to win the Town Hall 14 Cup. But you know, she'll just dive into the Town Hall, she'll secure that first star nice and easy against Wand's base. And then, with the Lightning to pair with the Blimp, she can now go in with an Electro Titan Smash Attack here. Loses the Queen ability pretty early, not the... Best with that. I thought the Electro Titan would defend the Queen from those headhunters, but apparently not. Apparently not. No poison necessary for an Electro Titan attack here, but obviously slowing in the strikes during that headhunter would have been super helpful. So Queen ability already used, but she only needs to get a 50% here to lock in the win, and that is all but guaranteed at this point here. She'll charge these Electro Titans into the scatter shot. She's got another rage and a jump to cross through the middle of the base. She needs just needs to reach the percentage up to 50%. If she could go beyond that and get the triple, then that would just be icing on the cake. But, oh no! <laughs> why the, why the Electro Titan slid off? Well, that Electro Titan is trying to throw. It's trying to stop her from getting what she needs. But it does die. It does die. And the heal is transferred back over. There's the jump spell. There's the ward ability. Racking through that percentage very quickly. And there's no chance that this is going to fail at this point here. It is locked in. Town Hall 14 Cup Champions now claimed into the hands of Hexa as Gabriella carries them into another victory. No triple necessary this one. She can finally sit back and let her team carry her for once instead of the other way around. So there we go. The Town Hall 14 Championship is decided with 50% cross there. And there it is with a $25,000 prize pool. We're going to be passing Hexa over $1,700 of, or excuse me, $1,500 of it. But Powerhouse will not be walking away empty handed. They will claim $700 of their own. But wait, this queen's still moving. She frees up the defensive road champion. The road champion's moving still. If she gets this defensive road champion down, his or her road champion could potentially take out the rest of the base. One heal is still alive. And no, road champion dies out there. So, I mean, it was fine. It was a very safe attack there. She didn't need to take any risk. There was no reason to. Just secure the talent takedown, do as safe as an attack to get the 50% as possible, and lock in that win with 14 stars. A brilliant performance here, all the way through. 
and they definitely deserve their victory today.